we've got a wide range of needs in my class. Um, I've got one child who didn't speak at all at the start of the year because he is a selective mute. So building on from him at the start of the year, even when we did the workshops and we looked at growth mindset, for him when we went and started doing the activities, his focus was just to read one sentence from the book, um, which he managed to do, which is a huge jump from where he was before. It's important not to give up because then you'll never know if you can do it or not. Unwritten with not eating, so I had to keep on writing it over and over again. We're going to give them um, learning between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. I think on his work it said, well done for not giving up, because that's the day after we did growth mindset. So if you've got a fixed mindset, you've got like a non-colourful and it's all grey and sad, but when you've got a growth mindset, your brain's all nice and colourful. When I find something difficult in class, I keep on trying. I find that dividing decimals really hard, but I kept on trying and now I'm better at it. Doing the course myself, I actually found it really interesting because I think a lot of the time you think you do growth mindset just because you have a poster up that says growth mindset and you've got the words on it and sometimes you'll say yeah to them. So then you think, yeah, we do growth mindset because I've got a poster up in my classroom, so it must be there. But then watching the videos, and reading all the articles and all the research and things behind it, it totally changes your perspective on how you look at growth mindset. We looked for books, so growth mindset story books, because the younger children especially love reading stories and as a school we kind of have a big focus on reading and developing reading throughout the school. So it's something that the children in my class are a lot more confident reading stories that are maybe for younger children as well, because it's given them that bit of confidence boost in their own reading, and the younger children love being read stories by the older ones. So we got them to look up books they thought had some kind of message to do with growth mindset or perseverance or all that kind of thing. So they looked, the children went and researched for some books and found five books that they thought were all kind of had an underlying message around growth mindset. So it's not just me taking it on myself and saying, right, I've got to teach growth mindset. It's about looking at the children you've got and saying, well, these children do know about growth mindset and they have done it. So trust them to do it and ask them what they want, how they want to teach it and let them lead it rather than me leading it and giving them the ownership over, which is not easy at times to let them take ownership over things. But then they can really surprise you and they can really show you how much they do know which I think has made a huge difference. So that has been really helpful working with the management team as well because um, they've all been really supportive of the whole programme. So any resources or anything the children needed, um, they were quite happy to provide. The children have been sharing what they know with the senior management team as well because they all like to know how well the children are doing and it's something as a school we like to celebrate. So rather than it just being a thing where they go and see management for other other reasons or negative reasons it's something we can kind of enjoy and we can celebrate i think mistakes are a good thing because you can learn from your mistakes growth mindset helps me be a better learner because i don't give up as much now we want the primary two to learn never to give up we're going to read them growth mindset stories and give them activities we're going to give them um learning between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset